In this session on optical lithography, we are going to look at uh, projection lithography. So in particular, the system itself. Right? So, so far uh, we discussed in detail about uh, contact lithography and proximity lithography, where wafer and your mask are in contact or with a very small gap. But in this case, in proximity uh, projection lithography, uh, there is going to be a, a, a very large distance between mask and your wafer, but not just the distance, we are going to put very complex projection optics between those. So let's look at the system first and understand how the system uh, works and looks like, and then uh, later on we will discuss about how working of this uh, projection lithography system. So uh, by now uh, we should be familiar with this uh, three uh, different type of system. So in this uh, uh, session we are going to look at uh, the projection lithography. Right? So where we have added this projection optics right? and there is a, a very large gap. At the same time uh, we have put some um, really interesting optics in order to project the image onto the wafer. So there are two type of projection uh, lithography system. One is a stepper, the other one is a scanner, right? So a stepper works uh, with the following principle. So you have the mask, so that is the mask that you have here, and there is a, a, a flat illumination. So the il illumination is uniform across the mask, so that means all the structures that you had on the mask is illuminate, illuminated in one go. So what that will result in is the whole chip, the whole circuit is imaged in one go, right? At a, at a given time instance, when the illumination is on, your whole circuit is, is on the wafer, right? But on the other side, we have a scanner. So scanner is a very interesting, um, you know, uh, evolution from a stepper. So stepper was the first uh, uh, system and then came the scanner. In scanner, we don't allow the light to illuminate the whole um, mask in one go, right? So we create a slit, right? So we allow the light only through the slit and the slit actually moves, right? As the slit moves, the image is formed on the wafer, right? So unlike uh, your stepper, your scanner actually uh, illuminates only part of the circuit. So you have to do one full uh, movement across your wafer uh, in order to, or across your reticle in order to make this uh, circuit realize on your wafer, okay? So the reason we scan on top uh, is why we call this as a scanner. So the reason for stepper is we step, we write patches after patch, right, on the wafer. So this is what stepper gives you and the scanner, each circuit is scanned, okay? And each mask is scanned to be precise. So why someone, you know, uh, would go from a stepper to a scanner? Because stepper works really good, it, you expect high throughput because you are eliminating the whole mask in one go. Unlike in scanner, we are restricting right, the illumination. At the same time, you have to move the reticle and also you have to move the wafer in order to scan the whole circuit. So the reason uh, lies in the uniformity of illumination, right? So if I take a, a, a mask and if I want to illuminate, I want to illuminate this whole region with uniform intensity. Why we need uniform intensity? because intensity dictates the critical dimension, right? Intensity dictates the line width, right, that you can get, right? This is what we call critical dimension. So if you, if, if you vary the dose, right, because you have uh, non-uniformity in illumination, so in this case I am drawing a flat line, but what if your illumination follows this profile, right? as a function of distance, you have E naught at the maximum at the center 
and then you have some E naught minus delta E at the edge. So, we know by now that when there is a, a reduction in the eliminating dose, you also expect you know uh, a change in the dimension. So, in this case C D plus delta C D. So, you will have larger line width, right. You, we do not want this to happen because you want the circuit to be uniform. So, whatever you have on the wafer should be there on the whatever you have on the mask should be there on your wafer as well. So, the very reason that it is very uh, difficult to create a uniform illumination across this mask plate, right. So, this mask plate can be something you know 23 uh, millimeter times 4 let us say, right. So, this is what your uh, size of this uh, mask could be, right. So, how do we uh, create a uniform illumination, right. Then you have to go for very complex illuminating optics, right, very uh, expensive illuminating optics. But instead of doing that, we create a slit and we only make sure uh, that the intensity within the slit is uniform that is doable because now we have reduced the area right that we have to illuminate and with this reduced area we should be able to create an optics through which we can get uniform illumination. So, I take this wafer and now I create this slit which is a smaller in dimension and then I make sure my intensity here is uniform, right. So, if I take the, the, the uniformity in a, in a very large patch, right, uh, this is top down, if I take the cross section, it is going to look something like this, right. And then if I restrict the width right to a very small uh, slit, then I can have very flat illumination. So, this allows a uniform exposure and this uniform exposure will guarantee that all my CDs are uniform. I do not have any CD gain or CD loss and that is the reason why scanners became popular and right now they are uh, you know industry standard for uh, illumination uh, system in projection lithography. So, this is the, the fundamental idea behind um, you know the stepper and scanner. Uh, so, scanners are also you know uh, expensive because the system needs to be uh, controlled. You have moving stages and also moving uh, mask. So, these two should be controlled with a control system and this should be accurately controlled because the speed dictates whether you have continuity or not. If there is any delay, then your circuits uh, will not yield uh, the way that you want, all right. So, this is a, a, a typical uh, ASML which is a commercial uh, tool manufacturer, lithography tool manufacturer and pass 5500 system. And this is an argon fluoride uh, illuminated system, right. And uh, uh, this is a cartoon that shows uh, the tool, the configuration and what is inside of this tool, right. So, let me go over uh, one by one, right. So, what you see here, this is the laser source, right. So, this is your argon fluoride laser. Uh, uh, we discussed about this cavity. Uh, uh, that we have in this argon fluoride and that is what you see here, this is the cavity and then you have the optics that brings the light into the illuminating tool, right. This is all reflection optics and what you see, you know, from here till here. So, this is what your illuminating optics, right. So, your illuminating optics contains of various beam shaping uh, optics, so that you have uniform il illumination. So, here you could see you know the beam is pretty uniform large 
and this is where your mask is sitting so this is where your mask is sitting right um, and uh, illuminated by from the top with the illuminating optics and this whole assembly is projection so you can uh, imagine that the production projection optics is pretty complex it's not just a you know a, a very simple system and later on in the lecture we will see how this projection optics works and what are all the you know requirement for this projection optics and your wafer is sitting here so this is a typical uh, projection lithography uh, system where you have the light source and then you have your uh, illuminating optics and then you have mask and then you have the projection system um, on top of your wafer all right so the one important thing is uh, in this whole system uh, it might look really fancy and very complex and so on this is also very bulky all right these are all very huge system um, once you move your mask and wafer far away you know immediately what should come into your mind is how am i going to align these uh, structures right so we are going to use uh, multiple layers in order to you know make the the final circuitry so now how am i going to align mask and wafer becomes a critical question uh, that we will try to see uh, why your alignment is important and uh, what all the structures that we use for this alignment as well right briefly so this is the the uh, lens assembly right of the projection lithography system you can see here uh, you know is as good as a uh, as a pretty massive pipe uh, or metal handlers right uh, that uh, contains all the lenses right it's all uh, stainless steel but inside the stainless steel you have all the uh, optics right so there is there are large lenses inside this and the lens system should be able to be aligned properly without any misalignment and it should be placed uh, uh, in an appropriate fashion to achieve the resolutions that we are looking for right uh, so, as I mentioned, uh, how about the overlay, right? The alignment between different layers. First, let's look at uh, what are all the things uh, that will go wrong, right? When you are aligning two layers. So, one is uh, translation misalignment, right? Uh, the two layers can move in X and Y, right? So, the delta X and delta Y uh, will result in translational misalignment. There could be rotational misalignment as well because your wafer uh, is circular, right? Normally, your mask is rectangular, right, or square. So now we should make sure that your wafer alignment is proper. At the same time, your mask alignment is also properly done. So in case of uh, you know non uh, ideal uh, situation you you could have some rotational misalignment right so the size is all same but you will have rotation you could have magnification issues so this is the first time you are hearing about magnification right so far we have not uh, you know uh, discussed anything about magnification the reason for this is uh, the presence of the projection optics the projection optics normally uh, 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 down scales right it scales down the feature size right so we'll see in detail how this happens this projection uh, lithography uh, systems uh, they uh, scale down this uh, the size of these features and you could have some magnification issue so instead of uh, putting it here you could have you know a slightly larger feature than what you see okay so that is the magnification issue in projection system these things don't happen in uh, um, contact litho so contact and proximity so there is uh, no magnification effect right <clears throat> but you can still have rotation and translation the other thing is the the trapezoid effect right this is a a, a non-ideal um, uh, both magnification and also translation 
right. So, this is again uh, a result of projection of optics, right. And the next uh, and the final thing is about uh, lens distortion. So, uh, I just mentioned earlier that uh, your lens system should be extremely stable, right. That is why we used uh, stainless steel uh, liners to put them in place. Uh, but sometimes you could have some misalignment, some vibrations and you will have aberrations in the system. So, that will create you know um, really an, you know very difficult to uh, image or any kind of corrections that you can apply. So, translation you can do um, you know uh, either wafer or um, uh, mask alignment, rotation can also be uh, handled with uh, the movement of either wafer or your mask, but this uh, lens distortion it is simply impossible to attain without attending the projection optics and the elimination optics. So, one need to open up the system and solve this. So, one, when you have lens distortion uh, the tool needs to be uh, handled. The other kind of um, distortion could be handled uh, in a more automated, automated fashion, all right. So, this is what you will have right when you have this uh, overlay problem. So, in blue is your uh, structure already defined let us say right and in red are the misalignments right. So, you could have a rotational misalignment right that is what you see on the left. So, all the uh, chips that you see on the wafer are all rotated. So, this becomes unusable. So, you cannot use this for anything because you, you are unable to connect layer 1 to layer 2. But then on the other hand you see slightly a, a different type of misalignment. Uh, so, you have a translational and rotational misalignment together right. So, there is a certain amount of uh, rotation you see here and also you see a certain amount of uh, delta x and delta y as well. So, in this case you see certain dyes with very low um, uh, overlay error right and then the outer edge you see very large. So, when you see uh, some of the dyes the center yield uh, better than the outer dyes then you should always wonder whether I have a combination of uh, overlay errors. It is not just rotation it could be a combination of rotation and translation together right. So, these are all the ways one would probe uh, this uh, uh, non uniformities in either performance or non uniformity in alignment uh, with respect to uh, the different type of misalignments that we have. And how do we tackle this misalignment? So, we need to have uh, overlay structures and then in particular overlay measurement structures to see how much misalignments we have. So, these are all three type uh, of uh, overlay measurement stu structures typically used. There are more sophisticated ones, but these are all typical ones uh, one can use very easy to uh, you know actually use. Uh, so, box in a box right. So, there is a box um, inside another box. So, what is the use of this? So, by doing um, some kind of image processing I will be able to look at uh, the distance between the edges that will give me delta x and uh, delta y and then I can look at the corners right and these corners will give me the rotation as well right. <coughs> So, how good or how well these things are uh, done and then I can also look at any kind of magnification errors that I have right and that will uh, result in you know uh, discrepancy in delta x in uh, in one direction compared to the other. A similar thing can be done with uh, frame in frame right and then bar in bar. So, here again uh, we will be looking at uh, the distance that you have right and the distance between these edges and so on. So, this will clearly uh, tell us um, what is the translational misalignment we have and what kind of uh, um, rotational misalignments we have. So, with these kind of measurement we can assess the situation right. So, when you uh, get a wafer out 
and then see some uh, anomalies uh, between the center and the edge and then you see some non-uniformities we we can do this measurement and then we should be able to say something about the type of uh, misalignment and where are we going to put these um, measurement structures and if I, if you take a wafer and there are multiple dies right i'm just exaggerating here um, let's say these are all the dies and these are uh, uh, overlay measurements are put on each die right so you are going to do this measurement on each die right sometimes uh, we place more than one right so that you have uh, more number of data to validate your uh, argument so by measuring all these uh, overlay uh, structures we can say something about you know uh, the the difference uh, in different uh, contribution of this different overlays. Uh, so, uh, uh, with this we come to a reasonable understanding of uh, the importance of this projection lithography system um, and how these systems uh, work. Uh, stepper and scanner we saw. Uh, stepper was the first generation or the earlier generation uh, so to say and then came the, the scanner. Uh, definitely scanners uh, are much more sophisticated compared to steppers because of the uniformity in the illumination that you get uh, uh, in the, at the mask level uh, uh, in the scanner. We restrict the area of illumination so that we create a uniform illumination only in that slit so that you can get a, a very good uh, CD uniformity. And the other important thing is about the alignment because we are moving the wafer far away from the uh, mask it is important that we take care of the alignment right so there are alignment measurement strategies that we saw but uh, later on uh, we will also see how active alignment is uh, done right so we have seen how to do the postmortem right once it is done then we can uh, look at why it has gone wrong right so what is the problem but how do we actually align so active alignment strategies will be discussed a little later uh, 